New year, new goals, play more games. Please do join us as we drink a lot of coffee, probably too much coffee, as we hang out and talk all things gaming. From the PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and in this episode, we're introducing the Oculus Quest 2. So first up, let's get our guest on the show and potentially a co-host moving forward for future episodes. That all depends on what his preferred console of choice is. Please not Google Stadia. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about that, mate. You know, like, um, hello everyone. My name is Matt. I've been a gamer since I was about year high. You know, as, as far as I can remember, I've been a gamer. Um, primarily on PlayStation and Nintendo, I am open to playing on any other console though. Like, so don't don't think I'm. You know, I mean, I am a bit biased to PlayStation and Nintendo, but you know what I mean. I will play games on Xbox. I am excited about a lot of games coming to Xbox. Yeah, you are very PlayStation. I mean, I'm very PlayStation. I love my PlayStation Five, but I primarily game over on the Xbox front, especially with third party titles and everything else. PlayStation, though, I go to PlayStation for the heavy hitters, the main events, the exclusives, the big AAA blockbuster titles that only Sony can produce. Spider-Man, Ghost of Tsushima, which I'm currently playing at the moment. I'm addicted. I love that game so much. But let's move on and talk about the Oculus Quest 2. I tried one of these over Christmas break. And I just had to go out and buy one. I was absolutely blown away and amazed at what this very affordable budget headset can do. Don't let the budget thing fool you. This is no doubt a top level, a top tier gaming virtual reality headset. It's a perfect introduction into the world of virtual reality. And I do feel that this is the best VR headset on the market right now. And the sales figures over this Christmas, over the holiday season, prove that. This thing is, has been such a hot topic over Christmas. Everyone has wanted one under their Christmas tree. This thing is the go-to headset for sure for virtual reality. It's owned by Facebook. Let's get that out of the way first. They are doing so many amazing things with virtual reality. They pretty much own all of the major VR studios and have created a metaverse as it's known as. With so many games and apps available for you to buy and download and play and just explore this whole virtual world, this incredible, rich, immersive world with this headset. Basically, this thing is as close as it's going to get to Ready Player One. And that definitely shows that isn't a bad thing. As soon as you put this on, you're sucked in. You know you have just entered something special. You know you are in for a treat, a virtual reality treat, because this thing is, it's mind blowing. So many games, so much content and apps on offer with this thing. And just, it feels like a community driven device as soon as you put this on. You can have party chats with your friends. You can play online with a bunch of people also playing VR. You can go to the cinema with people around the world and watch movies together using the big screen app. Granted, you do have to buy a ticket, you rent your own streaming ticket for that movie, and then you can go into a huge cinema and get the cinema experience right from this headset with people around the world also enjoying and watching that same movie. But now, Oculus Quest 2 aside, this year ushers in the return of the king. There is a heavy hitter that is returning this year to the virtual reality space. The king of the ring has returned. And I am talking about PlayStation VR 2. I think something does deserve an honourable mention, and that is Nintendo Labo. Now, if you have the Switch OLED, you can't use Nintendo Labo with your Switch OLED. It has to be the OG Switch, the original Switch. I dabbled in Nintendo Labo. I bought the gun and I had to build it all. And you construct the headset all out of cardboard. You're essentially doing your own DIY construction 
building all of this yourself and the way it immerses you with just cardboard is pretty insane. It isn't great, it's fun for about five minutes and then it goes in the cupboard never to be spoke of or used again. Everything clicks together in its own slot with this just cardboard pieces is incredible. Nintendo done a phenomenal job. They are definitely the king of cardboard. Now we move on to PlayStation VR 2 and to tell you more about PSVR 2 is my good friend Matt. In terms of the actual news that we got, um, we got all the details about PlayStation VR 2 so official name which is called well, Shock PlayStation VR 2. Basically um, they announced that the controllers were going to be called the Sense Controller. Now I know you've seen Surely you've seen the footage, uh, I mean, the image by now, like, of uh, the actual controllers, and they look like a lot like the Quest controllers. Uh, I know you actually have a Quest, so, I mean... The Quest controllers are phenomenal controllers. You have... I mean, it takes a little bit to get used to, it does. And it's just like your traditional controller. You have the A, the B, the Y, and the X button. And you have your analog sticks here as well, your thumbsticks. You hold it like this. You have the Oculus button here, which takes you home you long press that to go home out of a game and then you have a button on this side which is the three lines like a controller and that is essentially the select button the start button to pause the game and no matter the game that you're playing though i would always recommend using the straps because one second you'll be playing a round of creed 2 you're punching like the boxing gloves and then you send your controller flying and smash your TV or something or break something else in your room. The sensors are around here. I'm not sure if they're shown up on camera, but they are extremely responsive. And even your finger movement, when you're when you're looking at the controllers in VR and you're, you can see your fingers moving as well and your thumbs and things like that, it's very, very responsive piece of kit. I've been wowed by every second of play with the Oculus Quest 2. Yeah, well, I mean... Um... Basically what it is, though, the controllers themselves, they actually have some of the features of the dual sets built into them. You know, they've got the adaptive triggers, they've got um, the haptic feedback as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, the controllers look really comfortable. I mean, I'm just, I'm just happy that we finally have a PlayStation VR headset that doesn't require PlayStation Move controllers. Never been a big fan of the... Of Sony's Move controllers. They released uh, the version 1s with the PlayStation 3. But during that time, it was on the backbone success of the Wii Remotes. And they were phenomenal controllers by Nintendo. And of course, Sony tried to copy with the Move controllers. And you could tell it was just trying to copy off the Wii Remotes, off their success. This, the controllers. No peripherals that we need to buy to fully immerse ourselves. No cables dangling down or extra things that we need to wire up and connect to loads of other things to get connected to PlayStation VR. Hopefully there's none of that this time. And that's why I sold my PlayStation VR headset. It's just, it just wasn't doing it for me. Yeah, but um, I am really, really happy to see these new controllers in action. You know, they look really, really good. Um, and I mean, if you look at the actual headset specs as well, like, cause, I mean, the specs on the headset seem really, really good as well. You know, I mean, obviously, they're going to have OLED. I mean, we already know the PlayStation VR 2 is going to blow the Oculus Quest 2 out of the water. There's no question about that. And it is a true next-gen headset. A true next-generation headset that will work with the PlayStation 5. But I'm hoping it's going to be more like this. And that's what I love so much about the Oculus Quest 2. I can literally take this anywhere with me. I can just put it in a bag, put it in its carry case, the headset, controllers, charger, and away I go. It's going to be a premium price, and I think that's where the Oculus Quest 2 will still shine bright because of its affordable price point. And I think this will probably even keep selling when the PlayStation VR 2 headset hits. Yeah, but all that's are expensive. You know what I mean? I mean, look look at the Switch. I mean, the Switch has just released the OLED this year. Well, last year. Sorry, I keep forgetting that we're in 2022 now. So bizarre. Um, but yeah, I mean, OLED was released last year on the Switch, and it was like, what, £310 here in the UK? Like, that that's insane. 
So, I mean, the fact that you've got essentially what's going to be two OLED screens inside of this headset, like, I, I can't even imagine what the price is going to be. I mean, I've seen people speculating that it could be about the same price as the console, like the PS5. Um, I'm thinking about 400 I'm thinking it's going to be about 400 I think. Um, I think they might actually do a decent little bundle, I think. To, to make the 400 worth it. Yeah, I can definitely see that as an entry price point. The Oculus Quest is 299 for the base model, 128 gig. And then if you want the 200 and odd gig one, that goes up to 399. So I can definitely see the PlayStation VR 2 at a starting price of 400. But I mean, if you look at it as well, though, it runs like, what, 90 hertz to 120 hertz which essentially means 90 to 120 frames per second which like god damn in vr wow like you've just talking about 120 hertz this thing can go up to 120 hertz as well i'm just i'm scared to put it into that setting we all know what the playstation vr looks like you know this big clunky ass like looking thing that sits on your face and what we need to consider is the fact that, so basically they said it's got built-in microphone, so you don't need to worry about, like, you know, speaking and stuff like that into the microphone. It's all it's all built in. However, it says that it's got a separate headset jack for your, for your audio. So, like, to put, you know, your head like your headset on. So, it's like, so essentially you're having to put something else on top of this headset, which could already be clunky as hell. This does have an audio jack in it, so you can put earphones in or a headset overhead if you want to I, I was using an old playstation headset overhead to chat to a friend on party chat and whatnot i primarily do just use the audio that's in the headset and the microphone that's in the headset as well because the audio is so close to your ear it's literally in your ear when you have the headset on that is where the microphone is that is where this the audio is coming from but if you do want there is an audio jack there as well and the volume controls on the bottom here as well. What are your thoughts on Horizon VR? We know that that's going to be, well, I don't know if it's going to be a launch title, but that's the game that they've been announced to be working on with this headset. These two have been shown together. Yeah, I mean, Horizon, God, like, I mean, I cannot wait to see more of what Horizon looks like. I think I'd like to see, you know, moving around, shooting, stuff like that. I'd like to see what Horizon Call of the Mountain actually has in store. And I hope it's not just some generic VR experience. I hope it's actually a good game. What other games would you love to see come to PlayStation VR 2? Um, I mean, I think it's safe to expect that Gran Turismo 7 will probably get a VR mode. I think that's very safe to expect. You know, I mean, obviously Gran Turismo Sport got a VR, VR mode as well, so... I mean, there's plenty of other games down the line that got VR modes like much later and stuff, so I could I could see it happening. I mean, they won't delay Grand Turismo Seven. They will not delay Grand Turismo Seven. I can tell you that. I mean, what we're like two months away from Grand Turismo Seven now. Half Life Alex could be coming to it, and it's like an open secret at this point, this moment in time. Um, so I mean, like having Half Life Alex on PlayStation VR would be a very big that would be a big deal. I've been saying this since the original PlayStation VR. I'd love a jumping flash game in VR. I think jumping flash would work so goddamn well with VR. Like, it's insane. Um, I could maybe say they maybe doing a Grand Theft Auto one for it. I mean, if, you got to think, if the Quest is getting San Andreas in VR, I think it's possible, given that Sony have been boasting about this Rockstar part, you know, how, how the showing off, like, the future, like how they're showing off GTA and stuff like that in the showcases. I think it's possible we could maybe see a Grand Theft Auto game on the VR. Like, I could possibly see a Marvel game, to be fair, coming in VR. Given Sony's hold on Marvel, I think, as of late, I think it could definitely be possible. And funny enough, I actually think Naughty Dog might be working on something in VR. I definitely think we're going to see something from Insomniac in VR, but not sure what. See, I'd say a Marvel project in VR from Insomniac, but... Insomniac, Insomniac have sort of like, because they've dabbled in VR for a long time, and they've never done anything VR for PlayStation. So I could see them doing sort of like one of their more unique ideas, I think. Oh yeah, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas will definitely come to PlayStation VR 2, because that is coming 
to Oculus later this year. And yes, dude, a hundred times over, yes. Half-Life Alex. I really, really hope this comes to PlayStation VR 2. It would be perfect graphically with all the haptic feedback and everything. It'll look gorgeous on PlayStation VR 2. That was meant to come to the Oculus Quest. I don't know if it was there for the first quest, but I've looked for it on the store and it's not there. I could connect my quest to PC via Airlink or Link Cable, but I would have to then use Steam VR and I want to actually use Oculus itself. But that is an option there if I wanted to use it. So many more games coming to the Quest 2 in 2022. Just to name a few, we've got Assassin's Creed. Yes, we have a full Assassin's Creed game coming to the Quest 2. That just shows how much of a heavy hitter this is in the gaming space. That we're, The fact that we're getting an Assassin's Creed game on this thing. My personal favourite coming to this device in 2022, a game that we have all been waiting for for the longest time to come to consoles again and it's coming to VR this year and I don't know if it's going to be an old game or a new game just built for VR and that is Splinter Cell. We're going to be able to step in the shoes of Sam Fisher in virtual reality, here's what I think should come to VR2 and that's what's already available on the Oculus Quest and that is what was rated the game of the year on this thing last year and that was Resident Evil 4. Already an absolutely beautiful benchmark of a game back on the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube and to experience Resident Evil 4 in full VR with all of its horror, gore and storyline and immersion and just how incredible that game was back then to now play it fully in VR. I can't wait to experience it. I haven't bought it yet but it's on my wish list. And also Medal of Honor Above and Beyond that's also on my list to check out and play because that game looks insane. There's so many great games on the Quest 2, I'm just getting started. You've got, yeah, you've got games like Fruit Ninja and things like that, and Table Tennis and Beat Saber. Beat Saber, probably the number one go-to VR game. Beat Saber, you guys all know what Beat Saber is. It's awesome. It's, it's Star Wars meets Rhythm, and it's phenomenal. Who has, I would, I would say if you haven't tried Beat Saber out, and if you have a VR headset, if you're planning on getting the Quest 2, Beat Saber. Number one pick. Vader Immortal as well. I've, I've got that, haven't tried it yet. Dying to try it, to be fully immersed in the Star Wars universe and to weld a lightsaber as well. It's going to be incredible. So there is so many games that I cannot wait to dive into on this headset. And I'll talk more about this and its games in future episodes as well. But for now, Matt. Thank you very much, JD, for having us. Um, I hope we can do this again sometime soon, like m maybe next week. You're very welcome, Matt. Thank you so much for coming on and rambling with me about PlayStation VR and everything else coming. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys have enjoyed having your cup of joe along the way as well. Anyways, guys, I'll see you next time. Till next time, guys.